Welcome back to School Mustangs. We are so excited to get to see you guys again on Thursday. I'm Mr. Williams, and we wanted to share a few of the technical pieces about how we were gonna be doing school coming back remotely. Um, so this is Welcome Back to School Remote Learning Edition, We Can Do This from San Marin. All right, so we are still working out the last details of our uh, class daily schedule. However, we do know most of it. Um, school will be running from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., and there will be both synchronous and asynchronous components. The synchronous parts will be when we're at the same time face-to-face -face on Zoom, and that'll happen from about 9 a.m. until 12.10. We'll have lunch from 12.10 to 12.40, and then we'll do some asynchronous work, which means uh, not at the same time, so you might be working on that a little bit independently with teacher support, and teachers will be available to help you out during that time, from 12.40 to 2 p.m. The synchronous stuff, you'll have two sessions per week of 90 minutes, those are like block classes, and then you'll have one session per week of 40 minutes uh, that's together with your class on Zoom. Um, the asynchronous parts, we will have two dedicated sessions per class of 30 minutes per week and then a whole lot of floating time so that you can choose which course you're working on during that time. Um, so our technical day stops at 2 p.m., but we are taking an entire year's worth of instruction and condensing it down to a semester. You're only going to have four classes maximum per semester. Um, so it's very likely that you'll be doing a bit of homework. I mean, all of it will be homework because you'll be at home, but you'll be doing quite a bit of work after 2 p.m. as well. So 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. is guaranteed blocked out time. Um, and then the homework part would be anything after 2 p.m. and you choose when you want to do that. All right, so what is synchronous and asynchronous? These are kind of new distance learning terms. Uh, synchronous learning is when we are learning face-to-face -face at the same time. That's what we're used to doing inside of a classroom physically, but we would also do that in like a Zoom meeting. Um, things that we'll be doing during this time, we're gonna do a lot of group work. We're gonna do small groups where uh, you're in a little breakout room talking with three or four people. Uh, we'll use that time for collaborative work. We'll do lab work in the sciences. Um, we'll do planning of projects, solving problems, analyzing, the kind of stuff that you might want some teacher help right there in person. So it'll be a lot of you talking, um, conversing with your classmates, working in small groups for projects, problem solving, et cetera. Asynchronous work um, is when we are doing work at different times and on different schedules. So that's the kind of work, the assignments that you would find posted on Google Classroom. Um, things that you might have asynchronously would be like direct instruction or lecture, like this video. It's asynchronous. I'm recording it Friday afternoon, but you won't see it until you click on the link. Um, independent practice problems, so math practice, science practice work, um, maybe some questions about a reading you've done for English. Um, some research, so if you're doing a project uh, and you need to do some background research, that is stuff that you could do at your time scale, between, like on that asynchronous zone. Um, taking notes, so uh, thinking about your learning, taking in information. Um, readings, so these would be, uh, you know, read this chapter of this book. Uh, and then reflections and assessments. So uh, a lot of the assessments you'll be taking this year will be um, not multiple choice tests. You might have some multiple choice tests, but you'll have a lot more like free response questions and stuff that you can do uh, asynchronously. So um, a few of our expectations for synchronous work, most of our synchronous work will be through Zoom, although some teachers might use different uh, platforms like Google Meets. Um, we'd like to make sure that you are present on time. Because we're condensing a whole year into a semester, we only have about 45 or 50 sessions together. So if you miss one of those sessions, it's really difficult to make that back up. Um, we'd like to make sure that you are engaged so that you're interacting with your classmates. Um, it's gonna be a lot of small group work, so you'll need to be ready to talk and to interact. Um, we'd like to insist that your video on your screen stays on and that your entire head and face is visible. 
Um, that probably means you'll need to wake up a good deal before 9 a.m., I'd say 7.30 or 8 probably, so that you can eat breakfast, get dressed, and be ready for school. Um, sitting upright so that uh, you're kind of like mentally sharp and ready for school, and that you have some kind of a clear background. Um, like I'm sitting in front of my whiteboard, um, that's a great clear background. In this case, this employee of Zoom, uh, she is sitting in her office. She has a reasonably clear background, a uh, little part of her cubicle and some lights in the wall. Um, I can see her entire face. She looks engaged. Uh, she's got her video on. Good job, Zoom employee. You're doing it right. Um, for asynchronous work, this is work that will likely be posted on Google Classroom. So your job for this is to check Google Classroom and your students.nusd.org email address every single day for every single class. Um, you will be getting things like assignments through Google Classroom. Uh, you'll be able to check the due dates for those assignments. Instruction, like videos, um, lectures, those kind of things. Uh, the link for your uh, Zoom invite will be on there, and other links for things like research, uh, readings, etc. Um, you're probably familiar with Google Classroom, but one new feature that they've added is I know that a lot of you were frustrated by the number of emails that you were getting. It was automatically emailing you every time a teacher posted something. So if that's a problem, you can go into the settings and turn off email notifications or just turn them off for one class or just for one type of uh, notification. So maybe you don't want to get the announcements, but you do want to get the assignments uh, emailed to you. Um, that's fine. As long as you are checking Google Classroom every single day for every single class, you should be able to stay on top of things and keep up with it. Uh, to find the settings, there's uh, three little lines up in the corner. You click there and then go down to settings. Um, so the first thing that you will want to do is set up your, um, your space. And so I wanted to give you an example of how you might set up your space so that you can have a functional workspace. Um, since you're going to be at home, there might be a little bit more chaos than in a classroom. Uh, so I've set up my space so that I have a wall behind me because I don't want you to see all the rest of what's going on. For example, I don't want to see, I don't want you to see this hot mess of paper towels that I have sitting out, Yee! or the wires hanging from the ceiling, uh, because we are going to move out of this classroom and we haven't quite moved yet. Um, so I have it set up. Um, I am sitting upright. I like sitting on a stool. It just feels good to me. And then I've also put my computer on top of a little box um, so that it sits a little bit higher. Uh, good selfie tip, a little bit higher, direct face-to-face -face eye line will make you look really good. Um, so if you set yourself up, it's helpful to have a, uh, a stable space. Um, a blank wall behind you is great. Or if you don't mind that people can see what's behind you, that's A-OK. -okay. Um, and you could set it up on a flat surface, a desk, a tabletop. You could set a couple boxes on top of each other to give yourself a flat space so that you have a space to write with like pencil and pen um, on paper, and that you can have your computer there uh, and be able to work. All right, good luck finding your space. Um, and also, if some, for whatever reason, something crazy were to happen while you were in a Zoom meeting, um, for example, I have a three-year-old daughter, if she ran into the room screaming, um, it's okay to briefly mute, stop your video, um, just send your email or send your teacher a message in chat so that they know that you haven't just pieced out and taken off, that you've just taken a little break uh, to deal with an emergency. Just say like, emergency, back in three. Cool, teachers understand, um, as long as you're then getting back on and making sure that you're present and interacting. Um, we would like you to make sure that you're at school and in class the entire session. Um, and so if you disappear mid-class, the teacher will probably ask, hey, what's going on there? Um, so just let them know in chat uh, that everything is okay and that you're still there. Uh, but by and large, screens are on, faces are visible. Let's have a wonderful year together. Thanks, friends.